The exterior inspection will follow an orderly progression around the airplane. Beginning on the left side of the fuselage, check its general condition while moving back to the tail section. Examine the leading edge and tip of the horizontal stabilizer. Remember, always pay particular attention for dents or wrinkled skin, which could be a sign of internal damage. Look at the elevator, hinges, and elevator trim tab for security and freedom of movement. Don't forget the trim tab push rod underneath. Remember to be gentle and be careful not to pinch your fingers in the process, or worse, damage the aircraft. Look at the vertical stabilizer, rudder, and beacon, checking the same items as on the horizontal stabilizer and elevator. While you're removing the tail tie-down, check underneath for obvious signs of damage. After moving down the right side of the fuselage, check along the flaps, the upper surface being easier to see because they're down. Gently examine the aileron's freedom of travel. Control surfaces should move easily using only two fingers. Scrutinize the wingtip, navigation, and strobe lights for apparent damage. The wingtips are especially vulnerable to being struck by other aircraft and vehicles. As you walk along the leading edge, always look for dents or wrinkled skin, which could be a sign of internal damage. Drain a fuel sample from each of the five fuel sumps under the wing. Check each sample that it's the proper color and free of water or other contaminants. If anything is found, keep draining until the sample shows no further sign of contamination. Place fuel samples into an appropriate container. Some fuel testers have a built-in screen which traps water and other contaminants so you can return the sample to the aircraft fuel tank. Remove the wing tie-down. It's time to visually check the fuel quantity on top of the wing. It's possible to climb up using the handle and step on the fuselage. Make sure that the fuel quantity roughly matches what the fuel gauge has indicated. Check the fuel cap vent and make sure the fuel cap is replaced securely. A loose fuel cap may allow the airflow to siphon fuel from the tank during flight. Look at the right main gear. The tire and wheel halves should be in good condition and there should be no obvious leaks from the brake lines or loose bolts anywhere here or on the entire aircraft. On the right side of the nose, drain all three sumps underneath, following the same procedure as for the wing drains. Open the oil filler door and see that the oil is at the proper level on the dipstick, usually six or more quarts for a training flight. Take care to replace the dipstick properly. The engine compartment is a favorite place for birds and bugs to build nests. Keep an eye out for this as you proceed. Up front, inspect the air inlets and check the alternator belt tension and that it's not excessively worn. The induction air filter should be clean and uncontaminated. Look at the spinner and prop for obvious damage. Run your fingers along the blades of the propeller. Nicks or dents more than an eighth of an inch deep should be looked at by a licensed mechanic. Look at the nose tire for proper inflation and no bald spots, and once again, there should be no noticeable cracks, loose nuts, or bolts. The nose gear strut should show several inches of chrome. On the left side of the nose, make sure the static port is clear. This can become clogged from waxing or even bug nests. As we mentioned earlier, the left wing is almost a mirror image of the right wing. The procedures will add the fuel vent tube, pitot tube, and the stall warning, all being free of any obstructions. At this point, you've completed a circuit around the airplane and you're ready to proceed inside.